Hello, I'm Maddie. I'm Greg, and it's time for another Best Of video. A collection of your favourite moments from one week of our family science show. Let's, Let's go, go live! live. <laughs> uh, this time it's all about Project Earth, a week-long celebration of our incredible planet. Yeah, across five awesome episodes, we looked at some amazing things. The active world beneath our feet. The wonderful weather cycle. Powering our planet with renewable energy. Yeah, and we thanked the many people and animals who work hard to protect it. Now, why don't we kick off with our explosive Extreme Earth mm. and revisit one of our volcano demos. Yeah, but before we show you our take on the classic Mentos and Coke experiment, we'd like to say a big thank you to Pearson who are kindly sponsoring this best of video. Now, we will be back after this first clip with some more of your favourite bits, including how to make gooey chocolatey s'mores <laughs> using the power of the sun. But for now, it's time for some eruptions. Hey, Maddie. Yeah. The floor is lava! We are going to create a model of an erupting volcano. And things are going to get very messy. Yeah. Here's a drawing of our planet Earth showing the seven continents. And they actually sit on top of massive pieces of rock called tectonic plates. When those tectonic plates rub against each other, they create a lot of heat and that melts the rock into more magma. And that magma can build up in pockets underground called magma chambers. And magma chambers have walls of solid rock. But as they fill with magma, the pressure will build and build and build. And it will have to find a way to escape. And that route is normally straight up and you get an erupting volcano. Mm -hmm. So here is our model. Here is our magma chamber. It's a bottle of Diet Coke. <laughs> Imagine that the liquid is the magma. Now to build that pressure, we're going to drop some Mentos into the Diet Coke. What these are going to do is they're going to release a lot of carbon dioxide that's trapped inside that liquid. All that gas is going to release and the pressure is going to build up. And just like the magma inside a magma chamber, it's going to try and find its easiest way out. And for us, that's going to be up. Okay, you ready? Yep, I'm ready. Okay. Oh, saving this guy. Good idea. Get ready to move out the way fast. Okay, good? Yep. Here we go. It's all right, it's all right, just getting the lid on. Okay, okay. Okay, lid is on. Are you ready? Yeah. Three, yeah. two, one. Fire in the hole! <laughs> what an eruption! <laughs> Oh, it's still going! <laughs> yeah. Wow! Yeah. Wow! Oh my god! <laughs> wow! Still going! So there you go, just imagine the pressure built up inside that magma chamber and then the magma needed to find a way out and it went up! Whoa! Yes. That was amazing! Awesome! Back to you guys in the studio! Thanks. That was so much fun. Oh, I was so happy with, woof, we got yeah. such a good fountain. It was incredible. Trademark However, technique. we did think that we would show you a bit more of an inside friendly version of a volcano. Um, so I have gone and made myself my own little volcano here using a just scrunched up paper and a bit of paper mache. And I have inside it, I've actually just got a little, um, a little plastic bottle. Now I'm sure loads of you have seen this done before, but it doesn't mean it's not fun. It's okay? a classic. Exactly. So inside the bottle, I have put some uh, white Let's vinegar, see it on the camera. and I've also got a couple of capfuls of red food coloring. And if you nice. wanted to, you could have a little drizzle of washing up liquid, but that's up to you. Ooh. Okay. So every episode, we do a selfie where we will hold a pose for a couple of seconds, and it means you guys can try and get a selfie with us. And we're going to attempt to do it with the erupting volcano. But to make our eruption, I need to drop in a little bit of bicarbonate of soda and that will react with the vinegar inside. So I've just got the cap from the same uh, plastic bottle and I'm just going to drop it in. Let's do it. Are you ready for oh, this? Oh, the vinegar's already in there. Vinegar's already oh, in ready. there. Yeah, oh, we're ready to go. We've got to count down. Okay, okay. everyone count down. Five, four, oh my gosh. three, two, one. Go on, Maddie. Okay, there we go. It's in. Ready for the first <laughs> one, Where's my face? <laughs> I don't even know. Did we get it? Did we do it? I don't know what we're in the picture. That was a crazy wow. selfie today. Look at this. Oh, hang on. Let me take this off. Whoa. Let me take the camera off so I can see it. It's Boom. still going. Wow. Now, 
the thing about a volcano is that that eruption of the magma, and though when it gets outside, we call it lava. Mm -hmm. So once that lava's outside, it cools down and it hardens. And that's actually what makes this shape. That's cooled down Gosh. lava from previous volcanic eruptions. That was a great one. How cool is that? That was such a good one. So that's definitely something that you can try at home. We were really pleased with that one. Oh, yeah. If you tried it at home and you want to get a super high eruption, there are a few tricks you might want to try. The first is to actually leave the lid on but you make a small hole in the middle of the lid so all that erupting gas is squeezed through a smaller gap and it shoots higher in the air. Plus, we threaded the Mentos onto a paper clip and then we poked the end up through that hole, right? Mm -hmm. When you're ready, push it in. Paperclip drops in, Mentos drop in, kaboom! Clever. Let's move on now from the active earth below our feet to what's going on high in the sky up in our atmosphere. Now, we have a special guest's special weather report on the way. If you know who that is, give this video a big thumbs up. Before she visits us though, for our episode all about weather, we showed you how to make the water cycle in a bag. It's a great little activity and it hardly needs any supplies. This is a great place to start our episode on weather. Weather. And that's it. Oh, Did you sorry. blow it away? <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> I think that, there it is. How is a cloud made? And um, this is a great question to start with because it means we can talk about something called the water cycle. Mm. And the water cycle is happening here on planet Earth all of the time. Um, and we've got a great experiment, a really simple one that you can try at home to help demonstrate the water cycle. So you just need a sealable bag um, and then you just need some water at the bottom. This water at the bottom represents, put it a bit closer, let's yeah, put it right sure. there you go. This water at the bottom represents the sea. Yeah. All right, so you've got all this water and then you just attach this to a window. Yeah, a sunny window. So we've also doodled using a pen, the sun here and the cloud here. So here's where the water cycle starts, okay? So we've got uh, our ocean down here. This is our seas, our rivers, our oceans. And the sun will warm up that water. Now, when water is heated, we get something called evaporation. Evaporation. <laughs> and this is when water, a uh, liquid, will turn into a gas. So if you've ever seen a grown-up boiling um, a pan of water on the stove, then you might have seen the steam coming up out of the pan. That is evaporation happening. It's the liquid water turning into a gas, and we call that gas water vapour. Hmm. And so this is exactly what happens. So heats the ocean and then that turns into water vapor and it evaporates and starts to rise. So we put that on the window uh, and we filmed it or well, we took some photos of it to mm -hmm. see what would happen. What you see first is you see uh, all that water vapor produced that Maddie was just talking about. So mm -hmm. all those little droplets of water vapor and as they rise up they're just a gas but as they rise up they start to in the sky, they would cool down. Yeah. What we did is we waited until the sun moved off it. So you see the sun's on it. Mm -hmm. Now as the sun starts to move off it, that all that water vapor, that gas version of water, mm -hmm. cools down and it actually goes into little droplets. So this is when um, a gas turns back into a liquid. We call that condensation. So up high in the sky, uh, all of those water droplets start to clump together around little particles or little bits of dust. And that is how a cloud is formed. Let's have another look. Yeah. So they start to clump together into bigger drops and yep. then eventually the droplets which are now in that cloud get mm -hmm. so so big that they actually get too heavy to stay in a cloud and they fall as rain. So that's kind of how the cycle works. <laughs> the rain will fall back down to the ocean and the whole cycle will start again. Yeah it will hit the land, it will go into rivers, the rivers will run into the ocean yeah. and the whole thing will go again. So that is the water cycle. See super simple and a great way to learn how clouds are made. Okay so now we know how clouds are made but mm -hmm. did you know that there are lots of different types of clouds? Uh, see I know someone who knows all about those. Mm. Meteorologist Maddie. Of course. Mm. Now this next clip was voted by you as Let's Go Live's funniest moment so of course <laughs> we've got to include it in the Project Earth Best Of. I think it's time for a weather report and watch out for that cumulonimbus cloud everyone. Could mean a storm's brewing. Hello, I am meteorologist Maddie, and welcome to my weather studio. Today's report on cloud cover will start here with a stratus cloud. So stratus clouds, they are thin and spread out. And these bad boys are responsible for a grey cloudy day. But not just that, stratus clouds give us fog. Yeah, it can get very foggy with these. So you want to be, um, oh, look how foggy it is. So 
foggy. Um, let's clear that away. Okay, it is a very, very cloudy day today. So um, as well as stratus clouds, we also have uh, some cirrus clouds. I'll put the cirrus clouds just here. So cirrus clouds, uh, they tend to be high up in the sky, high in the atmosphere high up and cirrus clouds are wispy you'll see them on a nice bright clear day but these um they are full of lots of frozen ice particles Whoa, very chilly up there indeed okay so what about in this middle section what might we have there well we have something called the nimbo stratus the nimbus stratus so these are dark Rain clouds. Yep, dark rain clouds. <laughs> oh, you've got to make sure you've got a um, a nice waterproof jacket on if you see a nimble stratus cloud up in the air. <laughs> okay, but it's not just rain. No, we sometimes it's great fun to see a nimble stratus cloud because they even give us snow. And who doesn't love a snow day, hey? I know that I certainly, certainly do. Right, okie dokie. So, alongside our limbus stratus, in just about the same sort of area in the sky, we might get my favourite clouds of all, and that's these ones just here, a cumulo cloud, or as I like to call them, Toy Story clouds. Yes, these clouds are fluffy little delights. You might be out in your garden or looking out the window and you can gaze up at them and they make lots of fun, interesting shapes. But here's the thing, a cumulo cloud, you've got to watch out because it could bring you a bit of a, a light shower, shall we say. Not heavy, just, 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 okay, all right, a light shower, light shower. <laughs> right, but last of all, we have the queen of all clouds, and this is the cumulo nimbus. There it is, the cumulo nimbus. Now these, they are huge, enormous, towering clouds, but they will bring us things such as hail, storms, downpours, downpours, and Thank you for joining me at Weather Studio. That was Cloud Cover. It's still hilarious to watch. Yeah. Every time. Uh, now, in these best of videos, we revisit a handful of your favourite moments of the show. Do go back and watch the full episodes for more makes and more quizzes. Loads of stuff. Yeah. Thankfully, after that freak turn of bad weather, the sun is back out. And um, in one episode of Project Earth Week, we learnt about renewable energy and how the sun can provide the solar power we need to cook up some food. Which is great, because I'm starving. Where are you going? Well, the, the sun's out, right? It's time to get cooking. I want me some solar s'mores. Ah, yes. Well, I'll, I'll see you in a bit. Um, we'll be back after this next delicious activity. Why not harness the power of the sun to warm your own snacks? So we've got a really fun and tasty little uh, little make for you to try at home to use this sun's energy to capture it yourself. Maddie, bring it on. All right. We are going to so show good. you our solar pizza box oven oh yeah oh, yeah this is how you can make it at home if you and your family decide to have pizza as a very special treat then you can reuse the pizza box so the first thing you want to do is get some help from a grown-up and you want to all the way up oh upside down there we go <laughs> <laughs> and you want to cut a flap in the lid of the pizza box yeah now what you can see is I have then stuck some uh, silver foil, some aluminium foil to the flap. And then also if I open the pizza box up, you can see that I have lined the pizza box tray with silver aluminium foil as well. Mm -hmm. now if I take the flap up again, you can see that actually the window that has been created just here, I have uh, put some cling film over. Um, and then lastly, I had sort of put a little plate in the bottom that's made up of a piece of black card. Mm. And then just so we can hold the flap open, I've just used a little chopstick like this. And that means it can just work as a little lid like so. Awesome. So 
How well do you think it works? How mm. do you think it works? Um, have a little think about it while we show you it in action. I've come out to the garden and I'm pleased to say it is really sunny so it's the perfect weather to test out the solar oven and we're going to be making s'mores yeah um, I've got some digestive biscuits some marshmallows and some chocolate that I've put on the top so I'm going to load up the s'mores into the solar oven and then I'll keep an eye on the sun and I'll move the solar oven throughout the day to make sure it's getting as much sunlight as possible and hopefully we'll have some nice melty chocolatey goodness in a couple of hours Smalls are in, just need to close up the lid. There we go. And now I just need to adjust this flap to make sure we're getting as much sunlight reflected into our oven as possible. And that is great. All right, let's see what happens. Mad, I'm just eating all the marshmallows. <laughs> You're gonna have smalls too. <laughs> It is still super bright. The s'mores have been in the solar oven uh, for a couple of hours and it's time to uh, give them a try. Greg, we know we won't say no food. Food. <laughs> Okay, all right then. I say feel free to open oh, up the solar oven. What a cool design. I know, right? Tasty. Hello. So you can see the chocolate has melted and the marshmallows are squidged nicely. Dink. Dink it, sink it. Mmm, that's so good. It's still warm. Mm. How nice is that? Oh no. All right, messy pup. Oh wow. Mmm. Well, that's incredible. You have got to try this. Wow. Fair to say the solar oven worked. And all that without using fossil fuels to cook it. Delicious. Mm. Back to you in the studio. It was yummy. It was, it was so very yummy. Delicious. So, um, yeah. How does it work? So, this is it's such a neat little design, mm -hmm. right? So, basically, the solar oven collects the sun's heat energy uh, and then we use it to heat our food. So this shiny flap here uh, bounces some of the sun's energy down onto the inside of the solar oven. And um, that then, this plastic window that we said, the cling film window, that works like a greenhouse roof. So the energy moves through it and then gets trapped inside, makes it nice and warm inside. Mm -hmm. um, so that means that the black card absorbs yeah. the sun's energy mm -hmm. and keeps food warm from the bottom yeah. and then this reflected in keeps it actually cooks it from the top yeah it's, it's, it's genius it's a, it's a sun collector basically isn't yeah. it that's what it's doing and it did work as well because not only uh, was the chocolate nice and melty but the biscuit itself was really warm oh it was delicious they were so good so good Yes. Now, the sun isn't the only source of renewable energy. No. We also learned about turbines and found out how they help us to generate electricity from the power of wind and moving water. We had a go at making our own water wheel to help us understand how flowing water can move a turbine. I absolutely love this demo, but a warning, it did get a little soggy in the spare room studio. <laughs> it did. Right, let's check it out. Uh, and then we'll be back with our favourite final moment from Project Earth. We've got a little make that you can try at home if you want to, good to show you how to harness the power of water. It is a modern, it is a model water wheel. Yes. Here's how you make it. Okay. Right. You take yourself, shall I switch to this camera? Yeah, sure. Somewhere? Right. You need yourself a bottle and then find yourself some card. So these are actually index cards, but you could use birthday cards uh, or just a bit of card. Chop them up into square. We covered them in cling film to make them waterproof and we just held the cling film down with a bit of sticky tape. Um, now, this is where you'll need to get a grown up to help out to make some slits in the bottle. Five slits for the five paddles. And then you push the uh, these paddles into those slits. All right. Uh, next up, you need to make a hole at the bottom. Get a grown up to help you with that. That's bit, that bit's quite tricky. Um, you did a grand job. I used a that. drill. Yeah. So <laughs> grown up only task that one. Make a hole at the bottom. Um, then you need to grab yourself uh, a Michael Caine. <laughs> Little joke. Uh, you need to grab yourself a cane or a stick. Garden cane. A garden stick. Michael Caine. That fits through, <laughs> through the hole at the back and through the front like this. And then last but not least, attach a string to the front with a weight. You could weight this with whatever you want, some coins or some blue tack or whatever. Um, full instructions, of course, in the video description below this video. But the question is, will our water wheel turn and will it be able to lift the weight that we've attached to the bottle uh, opening at the end? 
bigger question, I think, is is this a good idea to do in our spare room studio with microphones and stuff nope. around? No, it isn't. But hey, we're going to try it. What we want to do is we want to turn the water wheel and we're going to try and raise the bottle cap up and down. Okay, you ready for this? Hang on, let me let me do it so they can see the close up like this because then that will work quite nicely. Okay. Oh, that works. Over, yeah, over the cool. tub, over the tub. Right? Oh my goodness. Ready? Are we over the tub? I hope so. Don't drip it! Yay! That yeah, works so well! well. Look, did you see? So you want to keep an eye on the bottle cap. It's the bottle cap that we want to Should move. we unwind it again? There we go, it's unwound. You're winding it up again. There we go, unwind once more. Here yeah, we go. go for it. Oh, that's my foot! Oh my god, <laughs> we're, we're holding it in a dodgy angle. Let me hold it, there we go. There we go. Okay, okay, we're ready, go. Yay! Okay, stop! The floor is soaking wet. <laughs> if you make any of the activities from today's show, we'd love you to send us photos. We're at Madimo and at Greg Foot on Twitter and Instagram. Our final clip is from our episode all about animal yeah. helpers. <laughs> yes, humans aren't the only animals that do their bit to help look after the planet. All animals, from the tiniest shrew to the largest whale, all play a role in keeping our precious ecosystems running. We decided to reenact some of our favourite animal helpers, which included a dung beetle, an octopus, and let's not forget the beavers. Animal Kingdom, it's over to you. We actually saw some very, very strange yeah. activity in our garden yesterday yeah. afternoon, we didn't we, did. Mads? Yeah, really odd. In very, fact, in very fact, strange. Let's get my binoculars up because we might be able to take a quick look out in the garden now. Everyone, get your binoculars up yeah. and can have you a look. See anything? See if you can spot something. No, nope, I can't see anything I at can't all. See anything there. What do you reckon? What about in those bushes? Possibly in those bushes at the back. back. No. no. What about over to the right? No. Over up to a the bit. Left. I'll, I'll swing them left. Swing them left. Can we see anything? No. Nothing no. at all. Right. Mm. All right. Come back then. Here we go. Wow. We saw some of the most extraordinary, most beautiful animals in the back garden. We did. First, we saw the dung beetle, perhaps one of the world's most underestimated animal helpers. Oh, <gasps> oh here it comes. Everybody, binoculars up. Feces is a fact of life. Without a way to get rid of poo, our world would soon be covered by it which is why the dung beetle is such an important animal helper. Some species ball up others' waste, not to get rid of it, but rather to eat it. One dung ball can create enough food to last a beetle a very long time. Here it is, showing off its trademark reverse roll technique. Other beetles don't just eat the dung, they lay their eggs in it. Very rare footage indeed. Fantastic sighting we saw yesterday. Uh, binoculars up, everybody. The octopus. It has a big head, big eyes, eight long arms, and it's most often found in warm tropical waters, not back gardens. She's about to show us some stilt walking, picking up shells from the seafloor and walking on them. Golly, look at that! If she feels threatened, the octopus will pick up shells and create a den with them, camouflaging herself from sharks and other predators. They're the recyclers of the seabed, using what they find as armour. Oh, hello there, octopus! That is not all we saw. No, no, we also saw beavers! Yes, nature's engineers that look after our waterways. Oh... Uh, I don't believe it. Binoculars up, everybody. Here they are now. Beavers are vegetarians. They strip bark from logs to eat, gnaw through trees to break off logs, and have orange teeth. They build lodges to live in that can be bigger than a double garage. It can take 20 days to build a lodge, and a family works together to interlock the timber. Their lodges dam up a river, helping to support waterways and creating healthy habitats for lots of wildlife. Great job, beavers! <laughs> I have to 
say we are the biggest fans of Sir David Attenborough in the whole wide world. That was our homage. It was, it was, absolutely. To the main man himself. So there you go. So an octopus is a brilliant animal helper because it recycles uh, shells and other things it might find on the sea floor. And then you've got dung beetles that farm poo and beavers that help to manage our waterways to create <sighs> habitats for other wildlife. That was a bit bonkers, wasn't it? Yeah, that was such a giggle. <laughs> and our neighbours were very confused watching us film that. So confused. <laughs> um, we hope you enjoyed looking back at some favourite moments from Project Earth. And if you want to watch any of the five full episodes from the week, then you can find links to each of them in the description box below. Yeah, have a watch as well of our special Earth Day episode, especially to hear all the fantastic planet pledges made by you lot. It was so inspiring to see how much you will care about the planet and also we heard from some brilliant guests about the many ways that we can help it thanks again to pearson who have kindly sponsored this video any grown-ups watching may want to take a look at their learner resources uh, links to those are in the description box below if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel then please do <laughs> we will see you soon on another video and as always stay curious bye, bye.